Breaking at five for the first time, we are seeing video from the body camera worn by Ferguson officer, the Ferguson officer seriously wounded during a protest on Saturday. We do want to warn you, some may find this disturbing. Yeah, well, the camera records Officer Travis Brown running to control the chaos, and as he's trying to make that arrest, he ultimately gets knocked to the ground, hitting his head. Hey, cut that way. 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 chaotic moments here. You can see the officers clearing the area as they work to help Brown. And then a couple minutes later, we see police carrying Brown to get medical help. He's unresponsive at this point, and they're trying to ask him questions. TJ, look at me. TJ, look at me. Look at me. What day is it? Close the door. They get him in the back of that emergency vehicle, close the door. He's then taken to the hospital where at this hour and today he does still remain in critical condition. More news breaking in this story at this hour. First Lord 4 investigates learning about new charges against Torin Taylor. Ferguson police say during the chaos he tried to grab an officer's gun and remove it from the holster. Torin Taylor is also charged with shaking and breaking the gate to the police department. Tonight at 6, First Lord 4 investigates digs further into his background and past run-ins with the Law. Well, the new body cam video from Officer Brown adds to the video that you see behind us, which came out yesterday. This officer's injury has caused Ferguson's chief and other leaders to lay blame on protesters. Now new here at 5-1 area leader takes issue with that. First Alert Force Dion Broxton joining us live from Ferguson PD tonight. Sam, a visual for Officer Travis Brown happened here yesterday. You can see the blue ribbons on the fence. But well, that body cam footage that you just saw happened right over here at this auto shop. But Ferguson Movement leader Rasheen Aldridge says he doesn't want this tragic incident to take away from the progress the movement has seen over the last decade. What started as a peaceful protest for the 10-year anniversary of the death of Mike Brown Friday night turned dark early Saturday morning. As a leader, I will be the first to say it, it was an accident. Ferguson police officer Travis Brown is fighting to survive. This is the moment protester Elijah Gant runs into Brown, causing a severe brain injury. None of the leaders in this movement have, uh, including myself, have tried to push for violence, especially violence on an officer. Brown is still in the hospital in critical condition. St. Louis Alderman Rasheen Aldridge and U.S. Congresswoman Cori Bush took to social media to address the situation. Two politicians who gained notoriety during the Ferguson movement in 2014. But their sympathies came after Ferguson Police Chief Troy Doyle seemingly called them out Tuesday. Those of you, and I think you know who you are, that are in leadership roles in this region, have talked about, got a lot of face time, talking about the anniversary of this coming up. If you haven't condemned this act or condemned what happened to my officer, then you're part of the problem. He's getting to the point where he's going to look too far. Here is an example to some of the rhetoric Chief Doyle could be referring to. I feel like he lied to us. He never brought charges against the killer. I'm Cori Bush, and I approve this message. A Cori Bush commercial of Mike Brown Sr. calling out her then opponent, Wesley Bell. That commercial had no direct ties to um, what happened over the weekend. I think that was a commercial that um, was necessary. Aldridge says this bad incident shouldn't take away from the decades of change that came from the Ferguson movement. Now it seems that if you're trying to villainize the protest movement. I reached out to U.S. Congresswoman Cori Bush's office for an interview for this story, but I didn't hear back in time for this story. Now, tomorrow, members of the 2014 Ferguson Movement will hold a press conference at 11 a.m. at St. Peter's United Church of Christ at Stein and West Florissant tomorrow morning. We'll be there to cover it. Live in Ferguson, Dion Broxton, First Alert 4. Dion, thank you. We also 